Jeff Bezos became a mythical figure in the business world long before he surpassed Bill Gates as the richest person on Earth. From humble beginnings, Bezos has built the largest commerce company in human history, Amazon. But years before Bezos' net worth surpassed $100 billion, he was the troubled son of a teen mom in Houston, Texas. From here, it didn't take long for Bezos to turn his life around and build an e-commerce juggernaut. Though much has been written about his habits and managerial style, few people know about his past. Today, we are exploring how Jeff Bezos built Amazon. But before we dissect his approach to business, let's consider Bezos' challenging childhood. He was born Jeffrey Preston Jorgensen to a 17-year-old mom and a dad who owned a local bike shop. While Bezos doesn't speak much about his dad, who was only 18 at the time Jeff was born, a few things are clear. First, he only agreed to marry Bezos' mom after he found out she was pregnant. The marriage lasted only 17 months, reports Brad Stone at Bloomberg Business Week. Her mom moved in with her parents because Jorgensen stayed out late and drank too much and was generally an inattentive father and husband, says Stone. He agreed to a divorce and paid a small amount of child support to Gise when he had money. Other times, he missed the payments. Three years after their divorce, Gise married another man, Miguel Bezos, a Cuban immigrant who taught himself English and eventually worked at Exxon. Miguel adopted Jeff, and Jeff took his last name. Jorgensen had to sign off on the name change, which he did, Stone reports. For a brief period, Jorgensen remembered the Bezos name, but through the years he forgot about it and dropped completely out of touch with his ex-wife and his son. Jorgensen's absence from Bezos' life was so complete that in a 1999 interview with Wired, Bezos said of Jorgensen, I've never met him, although in reality he lived with him for the first year of his life. The reality the reality as far as I'm concerned is that my dad is my natural father. The only time I ever think about it genuinely is when a doctor asks me to fill out a form," said Bezos in 1999. Jorgensen, for his part, had a nearly identical attitude about Bezos. However, Stone managed to find Jorgensen, now 69, who owns a bike shop in Glendale, Arizona. According to the man who tracked him down, he had no idea what I was talking about. Jorgensen said he didn't know who Jeff Bezos was and was baffled by my suggestion that he was the father of this famous CEO. Stone jogged Jorgensen's memory, trotting out details about Bezos and his mother. Says Stone, the old man's face flushed with recognition. Is he still alive, he asked, not yet fully comprehending. Despite Jeff Bezos already being one of the most successful businessmen in the world, Jorgensen didn't remember he existed, let alone that he was the father of a billionaire. Jorgensen says that in his younger days, he wasn't a good father or a husband. He eventually quit drinking, got his act together, and opened his bike shop. He's married, but he had no other children in his life beyond Bezos. And this is just to illustrate the tumultuous relationship Bezos had with his father growing up. But that isn't to say that Bezos wasn't part of a happy home. Bezos recently tweeted, I won the lottery with my mom. Thanks for literally everything, mom. It's clear that she and his adoptive father were very caring and supportive throughout his life. Bezos was industrious from a very young age and describes working with his grandparents on their farm. I helped fix windmills, vaccinate cattle, and do other chores. We also watched soap operas every afternoon, especially days of our lives, said Bezos. From an early age, Jeffrey displayed a striking mechanical aptitude. Even as a toddler, he asserted himself by dismantling his crib with a screwdriver. He also developed intense and varied scientific interests, rigging an electric alarm to keep his younger siblings out of his room, and converting his parents' garage into a laboratory for his science projects. When he was a teenager, the family moved to Miami, Florida. In high school in Miami, Jeffrey first fell in love with computers. An outstanding student, he was valedictorian of his class. After spending a miserable summer working at McDonald's as a teen, Bezos, together with his girlfriend, started the Dream Institute a 10-day summer camp for kids. They charged $600 a kid and managed to sign up six students. The Lord of the Rings series made the required reading list. At Miami Palmetto Senior High School, Bezos excelled and was invited to participate in the Student Science Training Program at the University of Florida, where he won a Silver Knight Award in 1982. He graduated as the school's valedictorian and a National Merit Scholar and went on to Princeton University. With an interest in space exploration, he initially planned to study physics, but he soon gave it up. So Bezos turned to his love of computers, creating a number of software programs while at the school. He found the field to his liking and graduated summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering and a second one in computer science. He stood out from the rest of his class by his presence in Honor Society's Phi Beta Kappa and Tau Beta Pi, as well as his tenure as president of the school's chapter of students for the exploration and development of space. Graduating in 1986, when the internet was known by very few, Bezos seemed to have already had a sense of its possibilities. At the time, he turned down offers from a number of large, prestigious corporations, taking a position at Fidel, a relatively young fiber optic company, where he would help build computer network for international finance. He stayed in the finance realm with Bankers Trust, rising to a vice presidency. At D.E. Shaw, a firm specializing in the application of computer science to the stock market, Bezos was hired as much for his overall talent as for any particular assignment. While working at Shaw, Jeff met Mackenzie Tuttle, also a Princeton graduate. 
They began dating and were married in 1993. Bezos rose quickly at Shaw, becoming a senior vice president, and was looking forward to a bright career in finance when he made a discovery that changed his life and the course of business history. At this point, Bezos could easily have continued his career in the finance sector. The job was well-paying by comparison to most work, though his salary was minuscule compared to his current income. In 1994, Bezos read that the web had grown 2300% in one year. This number astounded him, and he decided he needed to find some way to take advantage of its rapid growth. He made a list of 20 possible products to sell online, and decided books were the best option. This was the birth of Amazon.com. Speaking about the decision, Bezos said, when you're in the thick of things, you can get confused by small stuff. I knew when I was 80 that I would never, for example, think about why I walked away from my 1994 Wall Street bonus right in the middle of the year at the worst possible time. That kind of thing just isn't something you worry about when you're 80 years old. At the same time, I knew I might sincerely regret not having participated in this thing called the internet that I thought was going to be a revolutionizing event. When I thought about it that way, it was incredibly easy to make the decision. He named the company Amazon after the Amazon River because it was massive, monolithic, and powerful, all qualities he wanted his business to have. He accepted an estimated $300,000 from his parents and invested in Amazon. He warned many early investors that there was a 70% chance that Amazon would fail or go bankrupt. Although Amazon was originally an online bookstore, Bezos has always wanted to expand to other products. Three years after Bezos founded Amazon, he took it public with an initial public offering. In response to critical reports from Fortune and Barron's, Bezos maintained that the growth of the internet would overtake competition from larger book retailers such as Borders and Barnes & Noble. Two years later, the market value of shares in Amazon was greater than that of its two biggest retail competitors combined, and Borders was striking a deal for Amazon to handle its internet traffic. We weren't betting on the internet, his mother has said. We were betting on Jeff. By the end of the decade, as 6% owners of Amazon, they were billionaires. For several years, as much as a third of the shares in the company were held by members of the Bezos family. When the dot-com crash came, analysts called the company Amazon.bomb, but it weathered the storm and ended up being one of the few startups that wasn't wiped out by the dot-com bust. In 1998, Bezos diversified into the online sale of music and video. By the end of the year, he had also expanded the company's products to include a variety of consumer goods. Bezos used the $54 million raised during the company's 1997 equity offering to finance aggressive acquisition of smaller competitors. In 2002, Bezos led Amazon to launch Amazon Web Services, which compiled data from weather channels and website traffic. In late 2002, rapid spending from Amazon caused it financial distress when revenue stagnated. In 2000, Bezos borrowed $2 billion from banks, as its cash balances dipped to only $350 million. After the company nearly went bankrupt, he closed distribution centers and laid off 14% of the Amazon workforce. In 2003, Amazon rebounded from financial instability and turned a profit of $400 million. In the early days, Bezos was a demanding boss and could explode at employees. Rumor has it he hired a leadership coach to help him tone it down. Bezos was notoriously hard on his employees and extremely strict when it came to making new hires. He would ask applicants to share their SAT scores, and even asked a CFO candidate who would rank number two on the CPA exam why she hadn't come in first. There's nothing wrong with asking for SAT scores, Bezos told the Washington Post. He also often conducted hour-long reference checks on potential hires himself, asking 23 standard questions, including, can you think of a problem that everyone thought was unsolvable that you personally solved? If this person were really brilliant, you can remember these things. If they can't think of anything, it doesn't mean they're not brilliant, but it's certainly a negative indicator, Bezos said. Bezos is also known for banning PowerPoint presentations in Amazon. Instead, he requires his staff to turn in papers of a specific length on their proposals to encourage critical thinking over simplistic bullet points. Bezos maintains the email address jeff at amazon.com as an outlet for customers to reach out to him in the company. Although he does not respond to the emails, he forwards some of them with a question mark in the subject line to executives who attempt to address the issues. Bezos has cited Warren Buffett of Berkshire Hathaway, Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan Chase, and Bob Iger of Walt Disney as major influence on his leadership style. And Bezos has a few core philosophies that have buoyed his success. For instance, Amazon is focused like a laser on customers. Instead of starting with an idea for a product and trying to convince executives that customers will love the idea, Amazon works from the perspective of the customer to come up with ideas that will legitimately generate value. For example, Prime was created because it was understood within Amazon that customers wanted to buy quality products for less money, and customers wanted to receive products as fast as possible. Prime appeared to be a solution that would meet both of these customer needs. Regardless of his unorthodox and sometimes controversial methods, things worked out for Bezos and Amazon. His strategy involved reinvesting all of Amazon's capital back into the business. This made investors nervous, as Amazon didn't turn a significant profit for most of its existence, but Bezos was right to make this gamble. 
Amazon is currently worth more than $1 trillion and shows no signs of slowing down, even as other heavy hitters like Apple and Facebook falter. Bezos' personal net worth has been hovering around $150 billion, comfortably making him the richest man in the world.